In electrophilic aromatic substitution, we have aromatic compounds such as benzene. And essentially what we're doing is we're substituting those hydrogen atoms on the benzene ring with you know, heavier, more complex chemical groups. We can nitrate the ring, we can sulfonate the ring, we can um, add halogens to the ring, we can acylate, alkylate, we can do a lot of things. And so if we have an unsubstituted benzene, for instance, then it doesn't really matter um, the direction or position to which the substitution takes place, right? What do I mean? If we have an unsubstituted benzene compound, so this would be benzene here, it's unsubstituted, it only has its hydrogen atoms, right? And we don't show those. And it goes through EAS, electrophilic aromatic substitution, then we actually, I'm going to switch the orientation of benzene, but that's okay, I just rotated it. We're going to have now a product in which I'm going to use the letter, I don't like to use X because X represents halogens, so I'm going to use the letter A, okay? And this represents some chemical group or species, okay? That's what happens in the unsubstituted case, right? We have a benzene ring that undergoes substitution and we add, replace one of the hydrogen atoms with some compound or some chemical group and that's fine because these six hydrogen atoms in benzene are equivalent, so it doesn't matter. But now when we have a monosubstituted compound, right, it gets a little bit more complex, a little more difficult. We could have, for instance, a second reaction take place and we could add a group here. We could add one here. Or we could add one here. Or, the molecule is relatively symmetric, right? We could add one here or here, okay? Well, obviously, this position and this position, it's a symmetric molecule, those are equivalent. So this is the 1, 2, and, or the 1, 2, and we call that the ortho position, okay? 1, 2, ortho position. This would be the 1, 2, 3, the meta, the 1, 3 substitution product. And of course, down here at the bottom, we have 1, 4. This is para, okay, 1, 4. So it's interesting, you notice how I put the green for both 1, 2, and 1, 4. Chemical groups that direct ortho substitution also direct para. So chemical groups are either meta directors, those that direct 1, 3 substitution, or ortho para, okay, they come together. Ortho and para go together. So either you will have something form two products, ortho and para, generally one will be more favored, or they'll form the para, the, um, sorry, the meta product, the one, three product. Okay, what determines that? Well, it's about the, for, the cation, the intermediates that are formed, okay? Some, in, some groups stabilize the cation, the intermediate, and the best way to say it is some stabilize it by adding electrons to the ring. We say activating the ring, making it more reactive. Others actually destabilize the benzene ring. And so those that activate the ring or those that add electrons to the ring, okay, we call those activating groups, we would say that they are ortho para directors in general, okay? So electron adding groups, methyl groups, things that contribute electrons to the ring will be electron donating groups, that's what textbooks usually say, electron donating, will be ortho para directors. Those that withdraw electrons will be deactivators of the ring and they'll form meta products, okay? So if we take out what we have, let's start at the bottom. We have this carboxylic acid group. When you look at this carboxylic acid, you see it's extremely electronegative, right? So imagine I have it attached to benzene, for instance, here. As you look at this, you can see there are electrons all over the place. Um, you can have, you know, electrons move up here, it doesn't matter. But these, okay, groups, okay, and as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and draw B, which is very similar. Here we have, of course, OR, so it's an, you know, like an ester type thing. But they're very electron withdrawing. I mean, look, you have two oxygen atoms, you have double bonds. These are going to pull electrons away from the ring. Another thing you should consider is the size of these deactivating groups. They're pretty big, right? So the likelihood of placing something right next to them is rather small. It's not favored, okay? Energetically, it's not favored. Sterically, and in terms of stability, 
off the anions that form during these types of reactions. It's just not favored. So these very electronegative groups that pull electrons away, carboxylic acid, ester formation, these are meta directors. Okay. Now let's look at the sulfonic acid. S double bond, double bond. I'm just drawing all these double bonds. Look at this. Does this look similar to this? Right, structurally. Now you, you have even more. Um, you have even more electronegative atoms, but even more lone pairs of electrons. Right. So it's another big group. Lots of electronegativity. You know, lots of electron density withdrawing group. So it's another withdrawing group. Okay. Now it comes down to NO2 and NH2. And I can erase these. All right, now, and let's draw a nitrogen dioxide. NO2. It's pretty, it's not that big, it's bigger. Versus, or versus, depends where you're from, NH2. Okay. Look at that. And if I move this down here, you know, I can. Plus, these are equivalent resonance structures. You know, resonance structures mean you can pull things away. You think about resonance and what resonance means, and I should have pointed this out even with the carboxylic acid sulfonic acid. All these double bonds and oxygens and delocalized electrons in these side groups can pull electrons away from the ring. This isn't going to pull electrons from the ring. It's not. It's going to donate them. Notice it has these lone pairs of electrons that are available. Another example, let's think about the OH group. It's not listed, but it's also one that donates electrons to the ring. Right? You see the difference? So these can donate electrons to the ring. These are going to pull them away because of resonance, and of course you have these double bonds and these very electronegative atoms. I mean, certainly nitrogen and oxygen are also electronegative, but here they're involved in double bonds, right? Here they're not, so it's a big difference. So we would again eliminate that one. So these electron withdrawing groups, okay, these electronegative groups, they are all what we call meta directors, one, three directors. But those groups that can donate electrons to the ring, these rings, these activators, these are ortho para directors. And so if we wanted to, we could take this compound that I've drawn and do something like this. If we wanted to make para products, okay, there we go. Well, actually, well, I've already, this works. Um, another way to interpret this would be to <laughs> run out of room on the board to say I started off with that. Okay, and this part makes it more clearly. If I start, if A is an NH2 group, it would direct it the incoming groups here and here. Okay, so then now my product. With NH, with that group already there, it goes both ways. By the way, okay. I now I can get my. I'll put B, okay. My ortho, or my para, or of course I'm using every single color under the rainbow. <laughs> NH2, okay. So activating groups, groups that can donate electrons to the ring, will be ortho para directors. Um, electron withdrawing groups, groups that are very electronegative, groups that have, of course, those double bonds and those electron carbonyl groups. All these electronegative atoms will be electron withdrawing and meta directors. So, if you wanted to synthesize a compound, a disubstituted benzene that was, of course, had um, orth ortho or para, well, here in this specific specific case, para substitution one four, you'd use the amino group. Okay, not the nitro, not the um, carboxylic acid group here, or the other carbonyl group, or the sulfonyl groups, none of these. 